So thank you very much for joining us this evening. My name is Tim. I'm going to facilitate us through this evening. Uh, just a few safety things off the go. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have been in this room before, but I want to make sure that everybody knows. So fire exit there, fire exit there, fire extinguisher by both. There's also an alternative exit out through the back and the way you came in. Your bathrooms are also out and to the right out there as well. So that's my quick safety message for you. So thank you all for coming. I'm going to hand the microphone over to Mayor Barbara Wood. Thank you very much, Tim, and thank you all for coming out tonight. I see lots of faces from Ashcroft, Cash Creek, TNRD, Area I. So thank you for coming. Even though the hospital, the health site, the uh, services are in Ashcroft, it is your facility. These are your health care services. So thank you for caring so much coming out tonight to listen to Interior Health and have a chance to ask some questions. So I am introducing Karen Blowing, who is the Vice President of Clinical Operations for Interior Health North. Her territory includes Ashcroft and Cash Creek, so she's going to make a short presentation. There will be an opportunity after that to uh, ask questions. There will be a short break, and Tim is going to be back to walk you through how to ask your questions if you have not already done so. So thank you very much for coming out. Looking forward to a great, respectful evening. And without further ado, Karen Wilming from Interior Health.
for the last 20 years, I've been working in administration and leading in clinical health, health operations in rural and remote BC. So I just, I wanted to just put that out there. I think uh, the things that we um, experience in a community like Ashcroft are unique to Ashcroft. There are some similarities, but I acknowledge the fact that um, that Ashcroft will, will definitely present some uh, unique elements that are nuances for this community. So, before I carry on, perhaps I can introduce the interior health staff in our room. And um, Dr. Nancy Humber, I wonder if you could just um, stand up and thank you. Bev Rosler. <laughs> Center, um, in terms of uh, the services, the health center is open 8.30 to 4.30, Monday to Friday. And I should say, if you haven't already seen it, there is a, um, I'm not sure where they are. Oh, right in the back table here, a one pager that uh, you can take home with you that does uh, provide an outline of all the services that are provided through this center, as well as contact information if you have questions. So I would encourage you to take a copy of that when you go. Um, so, 
The health center, Monday to Friday, we have services that are operational between 8.30 and 4.30. And we're going to go over in detail what those uh, health center services are. Um, but I would just touch on the fact that we do have medical imaging, which is x-ray, uh, laboratory, the emergency department, and we're going to talk about that. We also have the um, Ashcroft Medical Clinic, and we'll talk a little bit more about that too. But um, I did want to just, I wonder, um, Dr. Humber, if you'd be uh, willing to just talk a little bit about the primary care center. Do you mind just interjecting? Um, I, I think it's important for us to highlight that the physician clinic is separate from the IH services. So, Dr. Humber, if you're willing, I, I'd, I'd take a few comments from you on that. <laughs> um, the, the medical clinic here, even though it's housed in the health authority, is a private clinic. It currently... Can you hear you? Is this better? Oh, much. Um, so there's three physicians who, who work here. Um, I remember coming here to a meeting several years ago, actually, and uh, at that time there was only one physician here. And we've put a lot of work into recruiting physicians since then. Um, so now we're up to three, and we're hoping to have a fourth um, in the spring. Um, but the, the medical clinic is a private clinic. It's not owned by the health authority. It's in the health authority building, but it's like a private uh, medical clinic. Um, we're still very actively involved as a health authority, though, in recruiting physicians and trying to support them. I remember when I was here before that one of the primary things the community wanted was stable physicians here and also physicians that would become embedded in the community and really liked a work-life balance. So I've worked very hard with the Health Authority to try and use all of the rural programs in the province as well as the opportunities within the Health Authority to try and do that. And I think we've come a long way in a few years. So I'm happy to say that now, several years later, I'm standing here saying you have three and hopefully a fourth physician to be part of that medical clinic. Thank you. One thing I would add to that is that um, Although the primary care medical clinic is separate from the health authority services, it's very great. It's a great setup for us here in Ashcroft that they're together under one roof. It provides some opportunity for the programs that are located at the health uh, hospital and health center to be very well connected, which hopefully provides for an improved experience for the patients and the health providers. Oh, I'll get that right. Okay, I wanted to take a minute to just talk a little bit about what some of those the health center services are. You saw that on the previous slide. Um, we do provide community-based services for public health, and just so you have an idea of what that is, this is things that are things like prenatal care, uh, support for child health, immunizations, and then th this this is a service that helps people get into other services, maybe referrals through to more specialized services through public health. Uh, mental health and substance use services are available from the health center here. This includes things like um, intake and urgent response for someone that's having a crisis related to a mental health issue, um, individual and group counseling, adult addictions treatment, um, opioid agonist treatment, which is along that line as well, and youth addiction treatment, just to give an example. We have home and community care services available in the community and an idea of what that means. This is our uh, wound care, dressing changes, blood work, medical administration. This is, this is, these represent uh, services for people that live in the community and have health needs that aren't necessarily emergent or of an urgent nature. Um, and our home health services are available seven days a week here. Um, and I would just uh, also add home support um, is the other uh, community-based service that we have available seven days a week as well. And home support, uh, you may be familiar with our home support workers. They, they come out and, and, and help you if you're living independently at home but require um, different, certain health uh, assistance with certain health things. Their help allows you to stay at home longer as opposed to seeking more, um, a higher level of care. So, um, and then Allied Health, this is where we uh, look at our rehab services, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, social work, and dietitian support. So those are, those are all available. And then I would just close with the long-term care 
uh, facility that is uh, in the community Jackson House and the services that are available there. Um, I talk about home support. Um, last year I just wanted to identify, uh, we provided 9,000 hours of home support in this community um, and about 1,700 hours of, of professional community uh, support for people living in the community. And I, I wanted to make sure we had time to talk about these other health services because um, for a community, from a community health perspective, these are all critical services for keeping people well and living at home in the community. Um, our emergency department, um, those services are available here too. And um, we are operating those services on a, the Friday, 6 p.m. Friday to 8 o'clock in the morning on Monday. Uh, staffed with um, with nurses in the department, so I did didn't want to miss that detail. Uh, the next service that I want to touch on is uh, telehealth, and this is another. As we go back to those uh, opening slides about the breadth of geography, the isolation of some of the communities that we have across the interior of BC. One of the um, and it isn't just the interior; it's isolated communities across the province as a whole. We're tapping into technology to help us uh, do a better job of reaching people who may live distant from where these services might be readily available in bigger cities. And you can see around the circle, there's examples on this slide of the things that we're using uh, telehealth for. The health center in Ashcroft has two telehealth um, units on site and those telehealth units are used by people in Ashcroft with the support of the healthcare team here to um, real examples that I can provide will be a preoperative uh, screening. So if you're, if you're booked for surgery, say at the Lillooet Hospital, um, your preoperative appointment can be done through the use of telehealth as opposed to driving up the highway for that preoperative consult. That's one example. We're also using uh, uh, psychiatry telehealth consults for people who are having a um, crisis uh, and need intervention uh, right away in their local community as opposed to having to drive to our tertiary center to access um, a psychiatry consult while they're in the midst of a, a medical crisis. So those are, those are two very positive examples that I know are active and well here in Ashcroft. But you can see the breadth of uh, the potential of um, other telehealth services that we're, we're growing into. And we see this as an area uh, of growth in terms of increasing access for communities like Ashcroft, uh, bringing services closer to this community, and also um, hopefully avoiding the, the highway time for short appointments uh, when you do need to see a specialist. So, I wanted to highlight that. Moving on. This, uh, the health center here um, in Ashcroft, and you will all be well aware of the service interruptions that we've experienced here uh, early this year. Um, I appreciate that it's been, uh, can be quite anxiety provoking when um, there's a sense of uncertainty around the health services and not knowing um, what's available, when it's available, et cetera. So we have been very, we, we've been working with the community here and the, the, um, the operations team, the management team locally to uh, address the, the things that might be contributing to the service interruptions that were experienced uh, earlier, earlier this year. And we know that one of the main contributing factors has been an inability to, uh, to find people to cover shifts at short notice. So um, there's been a focus on recruiting, um, making some improvements to the shifts that those, uh, that the, the, the baseline shifts that the nurses uh, have that represent their schedule here. And, um, and we've had, we've had some, some good luck in terms of nursing recruitment. And we'll talk a bit more about that. We've also hired a new site manager who is a registered nurse. Um, that individual oversees all of the health services uh, in the, that are provided from the health center here. And there's some 
real positives to what uh, the skills that that individual brings. And, and one of them is that um, she's, she has uh, an interest and the capability of providing increased training to the professional staff that are on site Monday to Friday at the health center. Um, and this may include uh, training for IV therapy, for example. Our community nurses uh, do IV therapy across the province, and um, this is an opportunity for us in this community for non-urgent, uh, and on non-urgent needs for our community nurses to be uh, trained to provide that service, as one example. So, so we've got um, some new, some new uh, skills in the health centre there. Um, I've talked about the emergency department recruitment, um, the additional training for our home health nurses, and we have uh, been increasingly stable with um, and reliable with our health services since uh, early July, and um, we anticipate that that's going to continue. We're, um, we have had some success with recruitment, and it looks promising into the near future. And the last bullet there is stability on the, uh, with the, those ED hours, which I understand and appreciate that that's uh, an important expectation from the community to, to be able to rely on that emergency department. Oops. <laughs> okay, here we go. I want to talk a little bit about um, what happens when there's a need for services other than what we can provide here in Ashcroft. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, the area supervisor from BC Ambulance earlier today, and uh, sounds like there's some excellent work happening. Interior Health uh, works very closely with um, the BC Ambulance Service. It's a, we're, we're partners in the delivery of health care across all of our areas. And we know that when we have uh, networks of care, which is, which is what we do have as you look across our geography, we can't provide every service everywhere. Um, we use things like telehealth. We, we, we try to um, bring as much locally as possible, but there will be times when patients and people need to travel um, to other locations to receive their health care. And um, this is where I, I mentioned uh, BC Ambulance. And, um, would just like to acknowledge that when emergencies do occur, um, BC Ambulance determines that we, we've worked quite extensively with BC Ambulance um, over time to develop and support the protocols that are in place for decision making around where patients go based on the assessed need when BC Ambulance comes to the scene. And um, sometimes, uh, this facility might be bypassed if there is a very emergent situation and time is of the essence. Um, sometimes there is a necessary bypass to a hospital that uh, provides a higher level of care. Um, those, pol those protocols are in place not just for Ashcroft, but they're in place across the region. Um, BC Ambulance, I do know, uh, has two cars in Ashcroft, and they have cars in the surrounding communities. And um, BC Ambulance is quite active in terms of moving those cars around if a car has to leave the community to make sure that there's an ability for a timely response um, to one community or another, depending on where those cars are going. Um, I, I did want to highlight the community paramedic. And this is, um, we talk about recruitment for nurses and doctors and lab techs and x-ray techs and, and the, the workers that we have that, um, that work in our home support departments, these are all health, health positions and health professionals that are uh, very challenging to recruit. We have shortage, shortages of them across the board. We don't talk about paramedics that often, but we know the critical nature of having patient transport working as part of our system of care and um, being able to retain paramedics in small communities is equally as challenging and a, a critical position to the functioning of the, the network of care. So I'm, I'm going to say it's been a few years in the making, but BC Ambulance has supported an, an initiative where they have created community paramedic positions across the province. And I think I just heard that um, 
well, we have one, we're at, lucky, we have one here in Ashcroft. Um, the person has been in the, in the role for a little bit over a year. And this position is unique in that they're providing, um, they're a healthcare provider that typically would be in an ambulance responding to calls. In this situation, they are doing community support. So they have a caseload. Some of you might know the person here. Um, and their job is to get connected with people who are living independently in the community but might need some support. So that there's an awareness and a link to the health system. Um, but it also, it does something else for us. This is very, that's an important function. The other important thing it does for us is it brings a, um, a paramedic into Ashcroft who lives and works here and has the ability to uh, support the broader system. So I, I did want to highlight that as an exciting opportunity that's been added here. And then Royal Inland Hospital, I should touch on that, that we, we know Royal Inland is about an hour away. I appreciate that uh, winter roads might contribute to some variation in that um, as we come into the winter season. But um, one hour away, and Royal Inland Hospital is one of two tertiary hospitals in interior health. And what I mean by a tertiary hospital is that um, very specialized services are accessed out of uh, Royal Inland that many people travel for. And um, I think it's fortunate for this community to be fairly um, close to uh, the specialized services that are available at Royal Inland. And, um, yeah, we hope that we can support the ease of access as needed. Okay, we have, excuse me. <clears throat> My apologies. Uh, talked a lot, I've, I've mentioned recruitment quite a bit as we've been talking here. But um, what I did want to highlight here is that we've heard from Dr. Humber that the Physician Clinic is its own entity. Um, Interior Health doesn't operate that clinic, but does support the physicians um, uh, in recruitment. So we've got recruitment efforts that are underway to support them to ensure that we're doing, uh, tapping into all of our opportunities there. Um, and, and the formal recruitment efforts for nurses, lab techs, et cetera, are underway. But I, I did want to highlight the community partners that are involved in recruitment for Ashcroft, and the municipality has been um, an active partner in uh, promoting Ashcroft, and I uh, heard earlier there are other partners that have been welcoming and uh, working to try to uh, um, create a supportive and welcoming environment to prospective uh, physicians, and we heard some of that uh, late this afternoon. Um, and, and the important message here is that as we consider a community, any community, that um, the success with recruitment will be a community effort. Um, the health authority has to be in, has to be leading and, and tapping into all of our formalized um, uh, options to support recruitment. And the municipality, the other community, community partners need to be in. But I just would like to highlight a, a community of this size. Everyone uh, has the potential to play a role in um, creating a welcoming environment for health professionals that we have to have in order to, to um, be successful at providing health services. So thank you to uh, the efforts that have been underway to date. I think we've had success on the nursing front, we've had success with our physicians, and we just expect that, um, that we're going to continue to be successful. I would, um, I, I did ask Dr. Humber to get up and talk, and I just want to acknowledge the, um, she, she mentioned the history around physician recruitment here, and I, I can't, I, I'm, uh, I'm relatively new in comparison to the history that Dr. Humber brings to Ashcroft and others, um, but I, I did want to just acknowledge the work that, um, that Dr. Humber has done to support the physician recruitment in this community. Uh, we have physicians that are, um, that while well, we've been successful with three, they've, the physicians that are here, um, we've, it has been, it's been a positive experience. They're, they're on a practice ready uh, contract with us. So Nancy, uh, Dr. Humber's done quite a bit of support for them in terms of 
supporting their practice and um, and and stabilizing what we've got going on in terms of uh, primary care. So I just wanted to acknowledge that and thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about um, what's been happening here in Ashcroft uh, over the last few months since we've had service interruptions and um, lots of contact with the community around what might need to happen for us to avoid uh, service interruptions and to assist the, the community in having their needs met related to the services at the health center. Um, one of the key things that has been undertaken is for a planning group to be pulled together and that group um, represents key stakeholders, elected officials from the, this community and surrounding community. Our Division of Family Practice, which is the, the body that represents our, our general practitioners, our, our doctors. Um, our Aboriginal partners are also at that table. And we do have a, a patient and family representative that's participating at that table also. Um, and, and in addition to Interior Health and other community partners. And um, what's happening at that table is, uh, and, and the group has been meeting since, I, I think, late June. I think I heard today that there's been five meetings of the group to date. Um, and they're, they're exploring concerns that have been raised uh, from the community, looking at current and future needs, um, considering current services and what gaps might look like and opportunities for us here. Um, I think it's important to highlight the importance of a uh, collaborative approach. Um, Interior Health appreciates that we need to hear from the community stakeholders um, as we move forward. So as we move forward together. So this table has represented some very good opportunities and I do want to thank the individuals who have been part of um, that work to date when we anticipate that, um, that this opportunity will continue into the future. So where do we go from here? And um, I, I do want to be clear. One of, one of the key messages that I think the community needs to hear in Ashcroft is that Interior Health is um, very committed to supporting the services that exist in this community today. We're committed and we appreciate that we need to stabilize uh, in a way that the community can understand what to expect from the health center. So a, f a few things that are underway now and will continue to be followed up on include training for nurses, um, looking at rural communities as we do train those nurses and find spots for those nurses. And it, it, I think we've got one, uh, one nurse assigned to Ashcroft uh, through our latest um, round of training. Um, continue to collaborate with the community stakeholders that we're working with. Um, as I said at the opening, the, the work that the staff are doing in this community is um, unbelievable and um, we're very fortunate to have the committed individuals who are involved as well as the community volunteers. And, um, and then the last bullet I will talk about is that uh, we are continually and we'll be using the, the community planning table to um, use sources of information to help us understand what the community of Ashcroft needs. So part of that is meeting with our partners, but is also uh, looking at data that we have available to us, both in terms of how the services here are being used, as well as um, how uh, well, the health of this community and what that means in terms of uh, the future uh, health service needs. So that's a, that's a longer term piece of work and uh, we will be expecting to, to launch into that uh, through our community planning table. So is it possible for you to go back one and let us know who those people are that are sitting in the select committee? So maybe when we get to the, if I can finish up here, um, perhaps we can address that in the Q&A, if you don't mind. Um, so I do, I, wanna, I do want to make sure we have time for questions. Um, Tim is going to talk to us about the process. 
and uh, we'll come back and have time for questions uh, in relation to what I've just told you or other things that you have on your mind. So, Tim? Okay, uh, so we're going to enter into a, an opportunity for you to ask questions. Uh, so we do have two tables set up with uh, post-it notes. We're also going to hand around some post-it notes and pens into the crowd. So uh, we'll get to our team to pass those along. You can ask as many questions as you like. Uh, what we won't have time for tonight is to answer all the questions. So what we are going to do uh, for you is uh, we are going to provide the answers uh, to the questions that we receive back to Mayor Roden and Mayor Roden will have those questions that uh, she can disseminate to the community. Okay, so we're going to get through as many as we can tonight. We know there will be lots of common questions, so we're going to group those. So uh, we'll start to distribute some of the post-it notes around. It'll take us about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, please get up, ask your questions on the, the pages, and then we'll uh, reconvene for uh, Q&A. Uh, Want to be respectful of your time. We did say 8.30. We'll try to get as close to that as we can. but. Uh, at the same time, we want to try to get through as many questions as possible. Okay? We, we'll, we, if we have time at the end, we will we'll, we'll take some questions from the crowd. So, yeah. I wouldn't say that. We, are, we, are, we, we just want to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to ask questions. So you can get up and, and uh, you can fill out and, and fill out these, uh, these papers and ask your questions and, and we're going to go through and answer as many as we can. Well, let's, let's go through it now, okay? So we'll start now and uh, get your questions answered. Thank you. Healthcare and Wellness Care Coalition. Hold it closer. Okay. <laughs> a group that has been listening to our communities, and our communities have been saying we have had enough of the cutbacks, and it's time to bring our emergency services back to seven days a week. <laughs> Inter Interior Care. Interior Health has tried to block our coalition at every turn because we were not elected. Well, as a coalition, well, we as a coalition know we have the support of our communities. We know that because we talk to them and because we talk to our community members, we know we want a health care model consistent, sustainable, with emergency services seven days a week. Yes. Up to now, Interior Health has only invited groups that they felt they could manipulate into believing that Interior Health is doing their very best for us. And we should be thankful. Enough. We are not puppets. Interior Health, please join in discussions with the Healthcare and Wellness Coalition. Consensus can happen. 
when both parties come to the table with integrity and no hidden agendas. Thank you. Okay, folks, we're going to get started. We've got uh, Dr. Nancy Humber up here to help with, uh, with answering questions. We've got lots of questions, and we're going to try to get through as many of them as possible this evening. So, uh, Mayor Roden, you wanted to say a few words. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to try and get through as many questions. I gather that a lot of people have put the same question in, basically, so we're going to try to answer all the questions that are similar, all with, with one answer. Um, all I would ask, please, everyone, if anyone watched the English language leaders debate a couple of weeks ago, people shouting over each other, no one could hear anything. It was frustrating, so please, I know we can do better than that. We will do better than that. We need to be respectful. Everyone's voice deserves to be heard. That's why we're going to try to get through as many questions as possible. If it is not possible to get through all the questions, they will be answered and the answers will be given back to the community. So thank you very much again for coming out. Thank you for your patience. And we're gonna turn it over for the questions. Thank you. So can you, you can hear me, is that all right? Um, Dr. Humber is going to help me with uh, some of the questions here. So thank you for that. Um, what I would say before we start is we had a little dialogue at the front of the room. We would like to honor the request for some mic time for questions. Um, we, we've got quite a few questions here and a few more that are on the side uh, table over there. We, um, we'd like to get through as many questions written as possible, but we will limit that time so that we've got time for um, some of the mic questions that might be in the room. So the first pile that we want to talk about, this, this uh, represents the questions about 24-7 emergency services for Ashcroft. And um, it, it is the the largest response in terms of questions from the group. So we'll talk about that first. I'm going to start and then I'm going to ask Dr. Humber to uh, fill in behind me. Um, what I would like to say first in relation to uh, an expansion from what we're doing today to a 24 hour, uh, seven day a week service model for emergency. Interior Health is not um, moving to uh, expand services in that way. We are we're looking to sustain what you have today um, and what has been in place. We've, we've had some challenges around uh, getting the people to fill the positions um, and we don't, we don't want to be experiencing service interruptions for this community. So our first priority is to sustain the service model that exists now. Um, I mentioned earlier when we talked about um, the planning that needs to take place in terms of the uh, services that, that will be needed looking into the future for Ashcroft. We expect to work with our community partners um, around primary care and uh, determine what that service need looks like and um, engage the community in terms of how that uh, looks going forward. And so I'll maybe just ask Dr. Humber to, to fill in a little bit more around um, around what an expansion would mean for the community and what some of the, some of the challenges might be with that. Sure, I'm, I'm not the greatest with a mic, but I'll try my best. Um, I'm, a, I'm a doctor and I still um, clinically work. I work in Lillooet, I've worked there for the past 25 years. Um, I've tried really hard to recruit physicians to Ashcroft, like I mentioned before, when I first started working this job, there was one physician here. We put a lot of work into recruiting. Um, I've also been very respectful of what I heard from the community, which is supporting the provider so that they can, uh, thank you, yeah. <laughs> um, so that they can have a work-life balance because it's one thing to recruit somebody to come here, but it's another thing to retain them so that they actually want to stay and work here and embed themselves in the community. So I put a lot of work into supporting the physicians to be able to do that. All of the physicians who are now here, the first time that they've worked in an emergency department in the Canadian healthcare system has been in Ashcroft. So I've been very respectful of that to support them so that they can feel like they're supported to work in the community, that the work that they are doing is valuable, and to not push them so that as soon as they're finished their return of service, the first thing they do is leave to go somewhere where they don't have to work in an emergency department. As a physician, the most stressful place for you to work is in emergency. So I think when we ask about recruitment, we also have to think about retainment of the physicians to come and work here. 
I understand that there's another physician coming in the spring, all dependent on a whole variety of factors. So whether that physician um, passes their assessment exam in Vancouver, whether they pass their clinical assessment working in a community, whether they pass their final exam, all of those moving pieces have to happen before they actually come in Ashcroft in the spring of 2020. In addition, that's if the physicians who are currently here, we don't lose any one of them. So it's very difficult to plan services when you have such an unstable physician, um, I guess, resources. I think that we're better than we were, but I don't know that we're stable enough to say this is exactly what we're going to be able to do at this moment in time. I totally understand that 24-7 is the ideal model. I very much understand that. I've lived and worked in a rural community for the past 25 years. However, we need to have physicians as well as nurses to work in the emergency department. So I just want you to know I will continue to recruit. I will continue to support physicians to come and work here. Um, and to be part of the team, um, but also respecting the fact that this is the first time they've worked in the Canadian system. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, a next pile of questions. They're, they're related to recruitment of nurses. Um, but you know, before we go to that one, I, I think it's related. We had a question about um, nurse practitioners and whether we would consider a nurse practitioner for Ashcroft. And it goes to the theme that um, Dr. Humber is talking about right now. So I might, I might ask you if you wouldn't mind to expand on the nurse practitioner topic. Height current yeah, that's this time. Um, so one of, one of the things when you plan for models of service delivery is looking at what is the population need? how many people are here, what kind of services they need, how many physicians are going to be here, how many allied healthcare professionals, and nurse practitioners are usually a very vital part of that. However, we actually don't have that information yet because we don't know how many physicians are going to be here. We don't actually have the population health demographics of the services that were needed to the extent that we can sit and plan at the table today and know tomorrow what FTE or what full-time equivalent of a nurse practitioner would be helpful. What we do know though is we have a very good table of all of the stakeholders that are involved in healthcare planning to actually get that information and to try and plan for how a nurse practitioner could be integrated into the system. What we wouldn't want to do is to have a nurse practitioner and then have the physicians here with not enough work so we lose a physician. So it really needs to be a collaborative decision um, looking at all of the allied healthcare professions and the physicians, depending on what the model is. Thank you. Okay, I'll go to the nursing recruitment. Uh, and some of the questions here uh, include points like, why, why are there no opportunities for LPNs at the health centre? Questions about the um, types of positions that we have uh, to employ nurses at the hospital and health centre here. Questions about how, how successful, how much recruitment success we've had. So what I would like to say in relation to this, firstly, is that absolutely we would consider LPNs. In fact, I, I missed it in my slides earlier. We have recently hired an LPN for our community programs, um, as well as an additional uh, community health worker. But um, we uh, certainly look at that skill mix when we're uh, looking at what, what kind of opportunities might be on our plate. So LPNs is something that we, that we would consider and are considering. And um, in terms of the registered nurses that work in the system here, we have registered nurses that work in the emergency department and we have registered nurses that work in our home health department and long-term care. And, um, and so but what I want to talk about, and I think the interest here is about the uh, nurses that are working in the emergency department in relation to the schedule. So we have uh, had success in recruitment. Three positions is what we've been able to recruit in over the last several months. We still have a position that we're, we're looking at and, and trying to recruit into and there has been interest, so we're feeling optimistic. Um, we have had to look at make, making some changes to the way those nurses are scheduled according to the operational services that we're providing. So while the emergency department is open, 
we need to be staffing uh, those hours. So that, that will be reflected in uh, the schedule that we have in place for those registered nurses. And then as we said earlier, we do have registered nurses in place um, seven days a week uh, for our community services. And we are doing some additional training there. So um, hopefully that's helpful. Um, we have uh, uh, several questions here about policy, uh, our, the funding framework for the province and whether or not interior health can influence policy. And the answer is um, yes, we, uh, interior health does have an ability to influence policy and we are participating on many levels, both within the health authority as well as provincially. Um, it's a good point that's being raised about the provincial funding models and um, this is where you know our elected officials and others uh, can have a voice and um, th it's the funding model that we do have now and uh, if you're interested in information on that I think it's probably available publicly on the government of British Columbia's webpage. Add something on the funding model because there is something very exciting I think that's coming and I see that it will make an impact for Ashcroft and that's with planning for primary yeah, care I'll networks. One of the challenges in this whole region is there's a number of small communities and the problems that are um, I guess brought forward in Ashcroft are not unlike what we hear in other communities. Lytton struggles with the same thing, Lillooet struggles with similar things, Logan Lake. Um, one of the initiatives that the Ministry of Health is putting forward is planning for primary care networks. So primary care networks are sort of building on that resilience of not each community planning independently. So a network is all of the communities trying to look at capacity issues so that if, if there isn't enough work for um, say a community paramedic in one community, maybe they could be shared between both. If we could offer virtual care in this region, maybe we could hire one person that would service and help all of the small communities in the area. So the advantage of planning for a primary care network together is the fact that we can put all those pieces together and the Ministry of Health has funding associated with that and we're hoping very strongly that in the spring we would be able to put together that information and make an application for this whole region. And I can see that that would make a difference for this region. And the reason being is that Ashcroft can't solve just Ashcroft on its own. It actually needs to work with hiring people for Lytton or hiring people for Lillooet and being stronger together because those people are often shared between the communities. So I, I think that that's up and coming. And the other initiative that I think is very exciting is the opportunities for virtual care. So we have funding through this region to figure out how virtual care can help. So we understand that geography is a barrier, that distance is traveled for a five minute appointment isn't really great for patients. So how can virtual care make that work better? So I feel very strongly in this region that virtual care is one of the ways to link people together. So it's one of the ways to take allied health providers and link them in patients' home with a physician. So for an example, the community paramedic in Clinton will actually use virtual care to link with me and I'll support her so she can work through her full scope so that that patient never has to leave their home. We can do that in other ways, but we just need somebody that can help glue those pieces together. So another initiative in this region is somebody and some funding to try and help virtual care to, so that geography isn't such a barrier in access. Thank you. Um, there is a question here that goes to what um, Dr. Humber has just explained in terms of the, the planning opportunity we have, the network of services, we're talking about the importance of being able to sustain what we have while we plan for the future. Uh, I do have a question about when will we get a hospital back in Ashcroft and um, I assume that means with inpatient beds. So uh, this goes, it fits with the explanation what Nancy has just described. So I wanted to acknowledge that question um, and say that we have a big job to do in terms of this opportunity around future planning and we're quite committed to, to be engaging with the partners here to do that. I mean spring 2020. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? I have a variety of questions, but I do want to address, we've got about one minute. 
Um, here's a question that says, who's at the planning table? And I appreciate that people would like to know names of who's at the planning table, but I would like to ask the planning table members that are in the room if you wouldn't mind standing. Some of you are here. Um, are, are people okay to do that? And then we could certainly follow up with information uh, related to names. Okay. Thank you. And I appreciate that not everyone is here. Um, and we will, we can follow up with a bit more information on, um, on who the others at that table are. Thank you for that, everyone. Um, okay, I think, I, 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 have a, I have a question here about uh, someone that couldn't find a doctor in Ashcroft. They're, they had to go to a neighboring community to, um, to get a primary care physician. And uh, we've been talking a little bit about that, but I don't know if you want to elaborate on that at all, Dr. Humber, about the importance of um, what it means for the community to have access to primary care for your day-to-day -day health care needs. I'm hoping with another physician that there won't be unattached patients, that every patient who wants to have a local physician can have access to efficient physician. I can't control how the physicians run their clinic. It's a private clinic and I can't control how they have their catchment or their rota of people that they or the roster of people that they look after. Um, but I do know that we're actively recruiting to have four physicians here and I hope that that will, I guess, help somewhat towards access to primary care. And again, like we talked about, um, primary care also from a nurse practitioner. What would that model look like? How does that integrate with the physicians who are already here? Thank you. Okay, I think we do have about just under 15 minutes to go to questions on the mic. If people, I have a couple more here I could go to, but if people want to uh, ask us questions. I'm happy to share the mic. <laughs> I can share mine too with you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Heather Inglis. Um, I live in Ashcroft. My husband had a liver transplant. My mother's got three very serious diagnoses, and I appreciate the care within the community that we've gotten. However, I drive 25,000 kilometers a year to take care of my family. And I, I see the slides, but I can tell you that that's great on paper, but in reality, there are not people in those positions. When my husband broke his hip, and he needed physiotherapy, and I couldn't even get him in the car, there was a physiotherapist in theory every Thursday here. So I think we need to be a bit more real about what's actually happening here and what is on the slide. And I can say that because I'm not attached to anything, except I think I have some respect in the community, and I think that everyone in this room wants to say this. And we're all very frustrated. So my question is, when are the positions that we're supposed to have and the care that we're supposed to be getting for our families actually going to be brought up to what you've presented to us today? So I can answer that question. Thank you for for raising that point, and it sounds like you've got a lot of support in the room. So my answer to your question is, I appreciate the reality, um, and, and I can commit that we will look into the points that you're raising. I'm, I apologize if we've provided you with information that has come across as inaccurate. So our team will go away. Um, our team will go away, and as I've said uh, from the beginning of our baseline service description, we are committed to uh, maintaining the services that exist in, in Ashcroft. So we'll be looking at every avenue there to uh, address the gaps that you've identified. So thank you. Yeah. Is this for, okay. <laughs> um, I just needed a clarification. With the petition that we did, even with that question, Interior Health is still not listening. If you read the question, not once anywhere did it say 24-7? What it said was emergency services every day. 
So let's have some hours during every day that there are emergency services available. It does not, we have never asked for 24-7. Good. I thank you as well for that clarification. Um, and I, what I would like to come back around to is we see that access to services like that is part of the planning that, that I, I can't repeat um, the description that Dr. Humber provided uh, a few minutes ago in terms of um, the opportunity that we have to really look at this community and understand the network of communities around us. and. Uh, but plan forward. So thank you for that. Um, I've certainly heard that today and um, we'll take that into a, a way as we continue to work with the community partners. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie Tui from Ashcroft. And I just have a few questions. The primary care network that you're talking about, how long will it actually take to put that into reality? I understand it could be five years. In 2006, there was a huge meeting in Cache Creek where they talked about nurse practitioners and told then, and that's 13 years ago, we still have not seen one. So those are things that they've already been talking about. So we want to see a little more action and a little less talking. Um, The same with the virtual care. I mean, there's probably going to be a lot of money. That money could be spent on nurses that can be right there doing the work. I think um, the community is here and they want to be listened to and I think that's pretty important. Thank you. Um, but it's not to be understated. Um, I think that virtual care has the opportunity for all those times that you actually have to drive for services that couldn't be offered here. But Seeing as yes, <laughs> now okay. yeah, yeah. So so there is virtual now and growing. Yeah. yeah. So there is virtual care services, and just so you're aware, that's not just the health authority. You know, a virtual care or a digital care strategy is a ministry initiative. So the, the, the pace at which things move forward is not resting on the shoulders solely of the health authority. You know, some of it comes from funding from the ministry, some of it comes from direction from the ministry, and all of those things take time. And I completely understand that it's frustrating to wait. I feel the same. You know, I, I'm a surgeon. I really like it when people come in and then I fix them and then they go away and everything is all better. So I like sort of that instant sort of, uh, fix, but you know these things take longer and I totally understand that I do know that they're hiring a virtual care coordinator for this region um, It will be hired probably in the next two weeks They've already done interviews and I'm really hoping that that person can be part of that primary care network planning to hear from the community What services are needed and what I see as a really big focus is two things one is bringing teams of people together when they're not in the same place working so we can use virtual care to have teams of care because I think that teams of care are the way of the future. The other access point is specialized services. So bringing in specialized services which could never be offered locally, that has to be a trip to a regional referral center, usually Kamloops and sometimes somewhere else, to try and bring those services virtually and connecting it locally. So I think those are two really important things that virtual care can do, not to replace services that could be provided locally, but actually to allow people that are working here to work to their full scope and actually to feel supported in the network. So one of the things that um, healthcare providers struggle with is working in a small community, they're not networked with other people. So they don't feel as supported because there's such a small number. So virtual care has the opportunity to network them in a larger, um, in a larger center so that they can work to their full scope. Thank you. And just to add that the recruitment of local nurses isn't replaced by technology. So thank you for that comment. Uh, oh, we've got a question. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, uh, and then I just, I, real quick, demonstrate the funding formula since you brought up elected officials and, uh, and Santo brought it up. It is a population-based formula, how it's funded. 
And so when that money comes from the federal government to the province, they distribute it throughout the province based on population. And delivery of uh, healthcare services in rural areas being largely a uh, huge geographic area are much more expensive for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. So if we're based on a population formula, that doesn't work for rural. It works really well for urban, but it, once again, rural sort of gets left out in the funding formula too. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need to dive a little deeper in the funding formula and maybe divide 90% of that $5 billion that comes from the federal government to the province, take 90% of that, divide that by population, scrape off the top 10% and give it to the rural areas. Thank you for that, that comment. Hi, I'm Lonnerie Porter. I'm one of three eMERGE nurses here. I hope that if I speak respectfully, I don't get in trouble. Um, I'm just wondering if we have these plans and they're going to come in and we will have positions for primary care nurses, nurse practitioners. There's quite a few of us young nurses that want to live here, want to serve our communities, want to stay here, but don't want to work straight weekends. Mm -hmm. yes. But no, my, my question is, I'm more than happy to ride it out if there's some accountability that we get those positions, we get that education funding, and that we get to serve our communities. Mm -hmm. That we don't put those positions up and somebody else gets them because we never got funding and we never got sent for education. Yeah. So when a nurse practitioner position comes up, somebody from the Lower Mainland gets it. Yeah. So thank you for your comments. I firstly would like to say I appreciate you here in the front row Okay, I appreciate that you're all here, and I, I'm sorry, but I know there's three of you. <laughs> um, appreciate the work that you are doing and the dedication uh, that has gone into supporting emergency services here. The points you're raising are really important. One of the things that we recognize as we get into um, rural and more rural and remote communities is that we do need to support our own, people that are from small communities. It's our best chance for sustaining services because you're born and raised, you have a reason to live in Ashcroft. And um, I heard it earlier today about fishing and hiking and there's a lot of great things about living in a place like this in addition to um, the small town feel and having your family here. So as a health authority, we would like to support you. We know that you're living here and that you're committed. So. We need, to, we need to follow process, but um, there's a lot of value added for us to be supporting the nurses that are working in the system now. So, we'll, maybe we could take it offline. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for raising that. Hi, I'm Joris Ekering, and I have a specific question that has to do with emergency services. Unfortunately, I am of a health situation that I have to occasionally require emergency services. I get taken to Kamloops. The last time I was discharged at 3 a.m. In Kamloops. Who do I call to get home? That is one of the main concerns that I have, is that people are just not being served that way. Thank you. Thank you for your... We did hear this concern raised earlier today. Uh, we sat down with the, the um, community table that we've been meeting with, and, and that was one of the things that was uh, brought up. So um, I did hear that there's been some improvement on that front, but we need to make sure that we are well connected with uh, the Royal Inland Hospital and the processes they're using so that we can pre help support you to pre-plan in terms of how you prepare for your discharge. Yeah. I understand, yeah. On the discharge end though, I mean, on the, on the back side of, of so, that, so that we avoid discharges at three in the morning. Yeah, so thank you for that. We have just a couple more minutes. I'm happy to take another question if you've got one. Actually, I just have some comments. 
Uh, my name is Leanne Davies. I am a registered nurse. I have worked at the Ashcroft Hospital from 1985 until July of 2018. My community is innovative and thinks outside the box. With the assistance of the College of Nurses, the Thompson Health Region, the Ministry of Health, my colleagues and I developed and piloted our in first call. We have some of the answers as far as what we're looking at right now. This was implemented in 13 other rural sites throughout BC. My community in Ketchman area embraced us and it was a huge success. We're now at another crossroads on how to best provide care for our communities and to provide RN support to the LPNs and care aides who work tirelessly to look after long-term care and palliative patients every day. We need to have meaningful face-to-face -face discussions with IH to find a sustainable and seven-day model of health care to, to, to achieve this. Thank you. I, can I just say that I'm very familiar with the work that Ashcroft led on Nurse RN First Call. And in fact, I, I was in one of those communities that picked up the work from Ashcroft and implemented it. It was far away from here, but we certainly appreciated the lead from Ashcroft. Thank you for that. Hello, my name is Jackie McMahon, and I was born and raised here, and I retired uh, from nursing in, in, for interior health three years ago. Um, la um, last year I was uh, very thrilled to join the local healthcare and wellness action coalition because I'm all about the people. The people that live here, the people that use the services, the wonderful services of interior health. I am one of the biggest uh, supporters and fans of interior health, my employers. You've helped with my family, my community, but I saw in 2014 when Jackie Taggart started the first consultation process, I was so looking forward to that result. And five years later, I still felt like we didn't know anything. People didn't know anything about where do they go to talk to, how can they put input. Um, talking about collecting data is more about the data, it's about the people, and we know the people. And that's where I, I decided to step up, get out of my comfort zone and shyness, and become vice president, because I wanted to do a health fair to get to know our communities, our 9,000 people in our catchment area. And it was a wonderful opportunity to meet people. Um, again, much like you were saying, explaining what the services are. That's what we wanted to do, so people could have faith in what was here. Unfortunately, it was confusing because we didn't get much support from Interior Health. We've got, um, we, we didn't have the dietitian, we didn't have the diabetic educator, the mental health um, clinicians weren't available, substance abuse wasn't available. Um, we just were told Bev Grosler will come with pamphlets. And that was great, but, you know, they often left early too. I mean, we had a great opportunity to empower everybody to have knowledge. And that's what I believe our local health and wellness action coalition is, is to work with you, to have faith, to come up with great ideas. We've worked in the system. We've We've treated these people, we know what the issues are and the moral dilemmas. We're not here to say what people want or, or tell you what to do. It's just to have that opportunity to have a dialogue. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That brings us to a little after 8.30. I, I, I would like to thank everyone for coming. There was a lot of bravery in the room. I'm very glad that we were able to sort of split the time to um, the mic uh, Q&A. So I appreciate the individuals who stepped up there. I do have a few questions that we haven't answered. And um, 
We will commit to get those answers uh, back through um, Mayor Roden, uh, and she can get them back out to the community. I know this has been a, a couple of hours out of everyone's evening, and I do want to thank you. Uh, the health services in Ashcroft are very important. It's obvious from the turnout here and the lines of questioning, and um, Interior Health yeah. is quite committed to hearing from the community, and hopefully we can move forward. And, and Dr. Humber, thank you so much for uh, helping me out.